Hey everybody, welcome back. We're here today to talk about AeroTune MFS, which is an AI powered performance optimizer for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and 2024. I'm gonna tell you what I think its biggest potential benefit is. I'm gonna show you it in action. I'm gonna compare it to Auto FPS, and I'm gonna tell you where I really think this is gonna make a difference for people with medium and lower end systems. But first of all, let's have a look at it in action. All right, there's one red. Start coming with some power in the pappies here. 500. Stabilized. Approaching minimum. It's either gusty or I can't fly very well, one of the two. More likely the second than the first. Minimum. Minimum. Landing. 200. That was an approach and landing into Linz, Austria in Sim Update 4 Beta with Auto Tune on. I did that flight twice, once with Auto Tune off and one with Auto Tune on. Let's take a look at the numbers. Taking a look at the two flights here, on top is the flight with Aero Tune on, on the bottom is with Aero Tune off. Doesn't look like a huge difference here, but I think as we dive a little deeper into these numbers, you are gonna start seeing a bigger difference. So these are frame times, so lower is better. The orange is the flight with arrow tune on. These are the 94th through 99th percentiles of frame times. You can see this is not only lower, but it's also a smoother increase here in the frame time. So these are kind of the longest frame times in both of the recordings. And you can see it's not a huge difference, but as we look a little deeper, we'll see some more. So again, here is frame times. Top is with arrow tune on, bottom is with it off. The light blue, these are less than two milliseconds. Those are the really, really good frames. These blue ones are less than four milliseconds. These are excellent as well. And you can see there's a broader band of blue, which is what we're really looking for in terms of frame times. The yellow frame times that are greater than eight milliseconds, they look about the same, but you can see overall the yellow, orange, and red is a shorter number here with AeroTune on than with it off. And here's where we're gonna see a nice difference. This is with AeroTune off. See the average FPS is 50.8. 1% low is 25.6 and 0.1% low is 14.8. If we go to the flight with AeroTune, you can see 53.3, again, not a big difference there. 27 for the 1% low, 18.7 for the 0.1% low. So that's gone from 14.8 for the 0.1 FPS low to 18.7. That's a 30% that's a increase for 1% FPS low, and those are the bad frames. Now, if we look even closer here, all these numbers, the sensor data is broadly the same between both flights. You can see here, smooth is 99.5, uh, low FPS is 0 0.3, stuttering is 0 0.2. Now let's look at it with AeroTune. Smooth 99.7 and 0 0.1, 0 0.1 for low FPS and stuttering. The percentages are lower, Actual numbers are lower. There's less time spent with low FPS and less stuttering. But the second flight, the flight with AutoTune, was 18 minutes longer. The time spent with low FPS and stuttering is definitely lower. Percentages are definitely lower on a flight that was 18 minutes longer. And we're talking, what, about a hour and a half flight. So, so in order to get it, you can get it on the AeroTune website. You can also get it here on flightsim.to. Just download and install. It's very straightforward.
you do have to register to get the program and it will send you a key. You have to give your email address and I had no problem with that. Just be aware that that is one of the things that you do have to do in order to download and use the program. You can see the reviews are very, very good. 4.73 out of five stars here on flightsim.to. I appreciate this isn't gonna be the easiest way to view this, but recording this is somewhat difficult with the way the program is set up to view. It's in your tray, so there's a tray icon you can right click on and get this menu. And there's some really neat things. So there's presets, you can save presets if you have different setups that you want for different types of flights, different locations, that sort of thing, different aircraft. And not only can you save them, you can share them, which I think is really pretty neat. There's different calibration modes. So you can do a performance focus. You can do a balanced focus, a quality focus. So you can have different setups for different focuses, different types of things you might want to focus on for different flights. Let's say I want to do a flight here in Anguilla in the 172. I'm going to select the tray icon, right click it, come up here to calibration, and you're going to want to run one of these calibration modes. Now, performance, balanced, quality. So in this particular case, I would want quality. So I click on quality and it runs a three minute evaluation of your system, and then it's going to apply a predetermined formula for giving you the best quality for this flight. Let's say you're sitting here in Atlanta in the A321. Again, right click the icon, come up here to calibration. And in this particular instance, let's say I'm flying to Dallas, Chicago, something like that. I obviously want performance. So I'm gonna click the performance focus and let it run a performance calibration on my system and tell me what's best. Now you can do this manually. You can click on the calibration wizard, tell it what your target FPS is, what your priority is, how long of a calibration you want it to do. This is deeper into the program than I would want to get personally. I would just let it do what it does and select one of the predetermined options. There's other settings like what thresholds you want for when the program is going to intercede depending on what your CPU is doing, your GPU is doing, or your VRAM is doing. You can select different features that you want it to affect. In other words, TLOD only. You could have TLOD and OLOD. You can have them all, the TLOD, OLOD, cloud quality, and shadow quality. There are on-off selectors here for the different thresholds that you want to use. There's a high altitude TLOD boost. So one of the things that's kind of neat about auto, auto FPS is that once you get to a high altitude and your system is, is relatively less taxed because there's not a lot of detail to be shown, it will kick your TLOD in some cases up to 400 or beyond. You can have a high altitude TLOD boost here as well. There are things like the stutter detection. The stutter detection is really interesting. There are two different modes. There's a statistical mode and a machine learning mode. The statistical mode keeps a rolling view, rolling history of your CPU, GPU, and RAM usage, VRAM usage, and then smooths it out and flags when they think a stutter is going to occur. The machine learning mode, you actually train it and it will learn over time by watching your PC use normal patterns and detecting when a CPU, GPU, or VRAM issue is gonna come up and an anomaly is going to come up that could cause a stutter. Using either of these methods, what it will do is basically determine when a stutter is about to happen and then mitigate whatever settings need to be changed to prevent that stutter from actually happening. This is a huge potential use case for this program if you're facing stutters in Microsoft Flight Simulator. There is a GPU diagnostics feature, which I haven't really gone into. Uh, you saw the, the notifications on the lower right-hand corner, the little pop-ups. You can turn those off if you want to, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to do. I had them on because I was interested in what the program was doing at different points. And you can also set TLOD limits. Click there. There's a minimum and a maximum TLOD if you want to set that. Coming back here to the AutoTune website, there is an extensive 
amount of documentation and troubleshooting and FAQ section and different explanations for the different options that you have within the program. So anything you want to figure out about it, there's really good documentation. This is a new program, but it isn't something that they just rushed out without a lot of explanation, which I think is really great. So if you have questions, you're going to be able to get answers. There's also a Discord. And I've seen the developer very active in different forums, different places online, answering questions about the program. Now, I might not be the best use case for demonstrating this program because I've recently gone from the 3080 Ti with 12 gigabytes of VRAM to the 4090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. But if you are running a, an 8, a 10, or a 12 gigabyte VRAM card, I think this program has a lot of potential for you. So I hope I've gone into the features well enough that you understand them. If you have any questions, any feedback, I'd love to hear them in the comments section below. If you have any experience with the program and you'd like to share that, I'd really be interested in hearing about that as well. Hope everybody's doing good and we will talk soon.